Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds. Welcome to another episode of Ask the Cheese Man. And this is episode 91, so welcome on board. Thank you very much, everybody, for turning up. And we've got Kim moderating in the chat room today, so she will um, kick out any naughty people or answer any questions or pop any links in there that I request. So she's, she is effectively my producer, uh, for want of a better word. Um We've currently got uh, 35 people watching, 37, I think, something like that. Uh, whatever the little ticker up on the top hand, left hand corner says. Um, all pretty cool. Um, now we've got lots of questions. Uh, shout outs this morning, say good day. First on the chat was Ruth. She was about an hour early, but uh, congratulations. Well done. Thanks, Ruth. Um, and in answer to your question, Ruth, um, you can only do a super chat once the uh, show is live. So once the show goes live, you can go to the super chat button and show the support, um, show support for me, um, or answer any burning questions. Um, uh, g'day to Bruce, uh, Paul, um, Jedi Fat, Larry, um, Playmobil Musicals, hmm, interesting. Um, Eric, Mr. Person, Aaron. Charles, g'day Charles, uh, Chris, g'day Chris, Patricia, Craig, uh, Trolley, um, Bobsy, uh, Jordy, g'day, Bradley, Shane, uh, Shane, is it Shane? Did I miss it? Shane, Shane, yep, Donna, Libby, um, Nicholas, Drew, and that's about it, I think. Um, all right, cool. So let's uh, just get into the uh, housekeeping for the ch for the chat, of course. Uh, there are no new members or patrons this week, uh, but a big shout out to all those people that do support me via Patreon and YouTube memberships. Um, I really appreciate that you help fund the show and the channel um, on an ongoing basis. It really does help uh, Kim and I keep uh, the lights on and the uh, the the electricity flowing so you can um, see this chat uh, live stream. Um, uh, as far as videos go, we're still doing the uh, Cheese of Day Challenge. There's only two to, two to go. Um, so look out for those. And then on the 1st of March, uh, I'll be filming the wrap-up video. So um, uh, it'll be the video about the top five cheeses and the bottom five and my thoughts about the whole challenge and um, maybe share some some stats and stuff like that of uh, you know how many people view them and and things like that so that'll be that'll be interesting um, and then um, this weekend I've uh, requested some milk from my supplier Inglenook Dairies so uh, I'll be making two cheeses one on Saturday one on Sunday don't know what they are yet. I haven't checked out my recipes and gone through all the requests that you good people uh, provide me. So um, we'll have a look at that. Uh, and then this Thursday, I've actually got an interview with a guy who's writing a book for Harper Collins about cheese making or cheese in general. Uh, and he wants to interview me for an hour on Thursday. So that'll be interesting. I don't know if my uh, name will be lights in a book somewhere, and uh, that'll be very interesting, other than my own, of course. Um, that's about it. And don't forget, if you want to support me during the show, um, then there's the Super Chat, which is down on the bottom of the chat box. Not this one, but the one you're looking at now. Um, and you can pledge as little, I think as little as $2 US, um, and it converts into whatever currency um, that you're using in your country. Okay. Now, um, let's get into some questions. Uh, I've got a new member. My goodness, what's going on there? G'day, Kevin. Thank you very much for your membership. Um, lovely to see. So, <laughs> must have been because I mentioned we got no new members, so now we have. Thank you, Kevin. appreciate it. 
Um, okay, so there are some questions already. Uh, Paul says, hello and thank you for your wisdom on washed rind cheese. Are brown spots and yellow moulds a health concern or do they just affect the flavour? Uh, they just affect the flavour. There's nothing wrong with those. Uh, as long as the rind continues to develop a darker colour while you're washing it, that's kind of all you're really worried about. Um, and it does start to turn reddy, orangey um, as you go along. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> so um, uh, another question. Uh, let me have a look. Charles says, hey, Gavin, finally got all my cheese making supplies. I'm going to make queso fresco this weekend. Any tips for a first timer? Mm, read the recipe. Read it twice. Um, what else? Let me think. Uh, just make sure you check out your... Um, uh, keep control of the milk temperature as you're making the cheese. Uh, and don't go over the target temperature uh, before you add the starter culture. Now, if you do... Don't add the starter culture. Let the milk come back to the target temperature and then go for it. And remember, as soon as your milk hits the target temperature, turn the heat off. Okay, so that's the tip for a brand new uh, cheese maker. So that's cool. Um, we've got another member. My goodness, it's all happening today. Um, the Mighty Yow. Thank you very much for your membership. Lovely. Um, all right, another question I think we've got here. Eric says what's my favorite what's what's your all-time favorite cheese and what's the best cheese i've ever tasted um oh that's a good one I, they're all good <laughs> i honestly i don't have a favorite i wouldn't be a cheesemaker home cheesemaker if i did if i had a favorite i would just then just make the same cheese over and over and over again but i don't so um, I get excited about all the different cheeses um, that I make, and they're all my favourites. Um, where are we? Uh, Trolley said, you should have a cheese board with cheeses on it if you've made and have a taste test. <laughs> what now? More cheese? Goodness me, I have more cheese than I know what to do with. Um, and I, as you've seen over the last... 26 days so far. It's the 27th today, yeah. Um, I've been eating cheese every single day and trying to stick to my 25 gram limit or 30 gram limit, whatever the recommended is on the on the cheese, uh, to make sure I don't put too much weight on. So, uh, but uh, yeah, Kim and I have uh, been walking, so that's that's a good sign. Uh, trying to get some of this uh, additional um, puppy fat off. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Bobsy says, uh, made some Greek feta last Tuesday, tasted it Saturday after three days in the brine, and oh my God, it was better than my first effort. So, re uh, what's that? Goes really well with my homemade sun dried tomatoes. I bet it does. I bet it tastes amazing. Um, where else? What else? What else? Uh, Donna says, I had to stop cleaning out my fridge for you. Oh, what, to come and watch the show? Nice. Thanks. Uh, Libby says, hi, everyone. I think Gavin's favourite cheese to make is Wensley Dar. Well, it's certainly one of them, Libby, that's for sure. Um, and I do make, uh, there is a video on Wensley Dar somewhere. I don't know if Kim's found the link. Somebody asked a question about Wensley Dar somewhere. Um, very cool. Um where are we? Uh, John says, uh, hey, I'm going to make wasabi, Jack. And my question is, when do you think I should add the wasabi? Uh, thanks again for all you do. Uh, I think you should add the wasabi when you mill the cheese. So just as you're, just before you're adding the salt, um, put in your grated wasabi root. Um, and hopefully the flavour stays in there. Because I've been told that when you use proper wasabi root, uh, the flavour dissipates quite quickly. Uh, so hopefully it'll stay in there. Okay. Um, Nicholas says, with the farmhouse cheddar blue, was uh, when it has grown blue mould and has been stabbed 
Should I just leave it, wipe it, or pat the mould down? The video talks about maybe waxing after one month. So after you've stabbed it, uh, Nicholas, you've got to make sure what that does it allows oxygen into the middle of the cheese. And then the blue mould then grows in there and then finds any fissures and cracks within the cheese and then grows in there as well. As long as it's got some oxygen, that's what it needs. So leave the blue on the outside. Don't wipe it off. Don't do anything silly like that because that then gets rid of your growth medium that tries to grow on the inside. So whatever you do, don't um, wipe off the blue mould. At the end of the ripening process, sure, you can scrape blue mould off. That's fine to make the outside rind look more appealable um, but during the growth of the blue cheese don't wipe it off um, there's a couple of things you can do if you if the growth's just going crazy and starting to make the surface of the cheese a little bit um, uh, soggy or squishy then yeah you can vacuum pack it but it's actually better to wrap blue cheeses in foil or micro perforated foil um, wrap now we actually have some silver wrap in the shop um, that i use for blue cheeses as well uh, and that helps mature them and let them breathe as well um, without actually sealing off all the oxygen because as soon as you get rid of the oxygen all that blue mold growth will stop uh, i hope that helps uh, drew says g'day from ballarat uh, g'day drew um, i have a cheese press but not a cheese fridge what cheese should i be making um, any cheese that you don't need a cheese fridge for. You can make feta, you can make a bel paese, um, what, me, what else? Uh, you can make um, any uh, white mould ripened cheeses, um, although they do need to be at 7 degrees uh, Celsius to have the white mould grow on the outside. So... Um, but there's lots. Halloumi, all the fresh cheeses you can make, uh, all the soft cheeses. Um, oh, they're the main ones anyway. So I uh, hope that gives you a, a list. There is actually a video that I made, um, cheeses that you can make without a cheese fridge uh, somewhere. Kim might have the link for it. Um, Shane says, I'm thinking of making my own cheese. Is it worth it on taste and cost? Definitely for taste. Um, I can 100% guarantee that. Uh, when you, <laughs> but obviously you've got to get it right to get the taste right. And people, um, it's a learning curve, right? The first few cheeses I made, uh, the feta tasted amazing. The Wensleydale tasted amazing. Then I made another cheese which wasn't so amazing. I can't remember the name of it. I like to forget all my failures. Um, but uh, and as far as cost goes, it's going to cost you. Probably forty, maybe forty dollars, maybe fifty dollars in ingredients to get started. So that's you know your calcium chloride, rennet, your starter cultures, um, salt, and um, whatever else you need. Um, but depending on the cheese you're making, and obviously some equipment. Now you may have um, some good equipment at home if you've got a well-stocked kitchen. If not, it might not cost you another couple of hundred bucks um, if you're going to buy a press. It'll, you probably won't get away with anything more than uh, anything less than a hundred dollars Australian anyway. Um, and go get a pot, a big pot, uh, put your milk in, and just the kitchen utensils that I use as well. So probably another couple of hundred bucks. So that's probably what two hundred and fifty dollars all up to start. And then once you get going, and the more cheeses you make, the cheaper they get, of course. And you've just got to find a good source of milk. Um, Plumabil Musical says, what's my favourite cheese? Uh, all the cheeses. Pack house. Pack horse. Pack horse. Pack horse. Um, have you ever made Canadian ochre? Yes, I've made a cheese very similar to ochre called Port Salou. Same style. Uh, I believe it's the same as they make it in um, in Canada, the ochre. Um, so there should be a video on that. Search the channel and you'll find Port Salou. Uh, Jose. Um, cheers from Mexico. G'day, mate. Um, seed turd. I like cheese. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Geordie, I had to take the wax off my Jarlsberg and dry it as the wax split and whey was seeping out. It was quite moist. I'm sure it was dry before waxing. Any thoughts? 
Uh, yeah, look, sometimes Yalesburg's a funny little beast. Um, as the eyes form, the wax expands. Um, some people do uh, don't wax it during that um, initial aging period at room temperature when it expands. But I find that the rind tends to dry out too much, especially because we've got smaller wheels of cheese as home cheese makers. So I prefer to wax it, and then if it does split, just re-wax it. It's no big deal. Um, but certainly don't vacuum pack it, whatever you do, and during the eye formation because the eyes just won't form. Uh, so, uh, so, and don't worry too much about the um, uh, the moisture coming out. Uh, that's just it. Just happens, same as mine. Um, Bobsy says, Gavin, my feta turned out a little spongy. What was but was still awesome. Doesn't mean I need a little more weight while pressing. Uh, yes, and then probably. Um, maybe stir it for 10 minutes longer um, when you're stirring the curds. That'll dry out the curds a little bit more as well um, if you're finding that's the, that's an issue. Um, all right. Uh, Robin says, love your videos. Thank you, Robin. Um, Kim's just banned somebody by the looks of it. Um, Miriam, hello. And uh, Jose already said hello. Hello, Jose. Mr. Person, I recently got into hard cheese making. I'm currently maturing Kefili, Wensleydale and a Havati. Just wondering what you would consider an ideal maturation time for each. Uh, Kefili, three weeks. Uh, Wensleydale, oh, two to three months. i do a three months minimum, basically. Uh, Havati, I think it's six weeks, but not having the recipes here in front of me, and I don't have a photographic memory, unfortunately, uh, that's as uh, as good as it gets. Hopefully that's any long... Look, the, the I wouldn't age the confili longer than three weeks. It really doesn't get any better in flavour. Um, Wensleydale, yeah, definitely, but I wouldn't go past six months. And Havati, I wouldn't go past um, eight weeks, two months, so... Um, Philip says, hello, Gavin. What's the easiest cheese to make at home? Something that doesn't require much specialized tools during the process. Uh, two that come to mind and, uh, I think I say this every week, but ricotta, very simple to make. Um, you just heat your milk up and add some vinegar. There's a recipe on the channel, uh, for whole milk ricotta. Um, try that out. Very simple, um, very bland, but you can use it in so many dishes. It's very nice. And the other one would be paneer, which you can use in Indian cuisine, Bangladeshi cuisine, or Pakistani cuisine. Or put a little bit of salt over the paneer once you've pressed it and cut it up and uh, use it as a snack. Very nice. It does taste lovely. The Mighty Yao says, um, Hey, Gavin, I don't have any way to control humidity, but I have a vacuum sealer and temperature control. What cheeses are good? candidates for that approach um no way to control humidity okay so there's a couple of things you can do um so yeah if you backpack the cheese that it's okay for semi-hard and say hard anything you wax normally you can get away with backpacking easy enough um and make sure it stays at the right temperature uh humidity what you can do to get around that is use a ripening box. So a ripening box is, let me just get one up on the screen for you. Um, I do have them in the shop. And they are in stock. I just managed to get a big shipment in of those yesterday and I've sold about 10 of them already overnight. Uh, ripening box, where are we Gav? Show me a ripening box. Sorry about this, uh, it's just taking a little bit of time. Here we go. I'll get the picture up and let's go to the secondary monitor. Okay, there we go. So that's a ripening box. Um, you can see that it's, it doesn't have to have a little pop top lid like this, but this is normally a microwave safe box, but you can see it's got a little rack in it. Uh, there's the rack there. Uh, very simple and uh, what that does there's the pop top thing. It maintains the um, the humidity of the uh, of the cheese by sealing in the moisture. So um, 
because it's in a sealed container. So you can maintain the humidity. Now, if you really want about 90, 95% humidity, all I do is put a damp cloth underneath the mat or the tray that's in the box. Um, so that works uh, very well. Um, so use a ripening box to continue to um, maintain humidity for cheeses that need it. Things like um, white mold ripened cheeses, anything with a natural rind, anything that's a blue cheese, then um, you will need a ripening box. And you can do that in your cheese cave. Like I don't maintain the humidity in my cheese cave at all. Um, I use ripening boxes to achieve that for me. So hopefully that helps. Paris says, was it really a challenge to was it really a challenge to eat 28 times a month cheese uh, yes it was and there's the curd nerd light thank you very much um but let me just find out who that was <laughs> i'll have to go all the way to patricia thank you very much um uh, patricia says maybe put yalesburg in a box 85 percent relative humidity as eyes form you can certainly do that, Patricia. That would work, um, as long as uh, as long as the temperature's right. So it's got to be room temperature. The Propionic Shimani, uh, its optimum temperature is twenty two degrees Celsius, but we try and ripen it at sixteen to eighteen degrees Celsius, um, and let those eyes develop slowly. If they develop too quickly, you just get one big bubble inside your cheese. It's not so good. But yeah, you could definitely use a ripening box. To keep the and put a say a cloth underneath like I just showed, um, and that way you would um, uh, you would be able to maintain the temperature. So that could be cool. Uh, okay. Um, uh, where are we? Um, no, it was it look uh, back to para fin, Paris Finn's question. Was it really a challenge? Uh, it was a challenge to film uh, all the episodes. Uh, that was a bit of a challenge and trying to figure out which cheese to, to buy and uh, which cheeses I hadn't tried before and that sort of thing. Uh, so that was interesting and a bit of a challenge. And then to edit all the videos as well um, was a bit of a challenge. So, yeah, I suppose it was. Um, I'm 20 minutes behind and I kind of uh, know... That's not quite good. Uh, Charles says, thanks for teaching. Thanks, Charles. Kevin says, I noticed I didn't join the club. Thank you, Kevin. I do appreciate you becoming a member. Um, I had to do it because I'm an official official Swiss curd nerd. Uh, well, no, well, there's actually a cheese coming up for you today uh, on the Cheese of Day Challenge, Kevin. I won't let the cat out of the bag, but it's one of the most famous Swiss cheeses there are. Um, so that'd be good. And Steve says, G'day, uh, Gavin, Kim, and all you curtain nerds. Uh, C Turd says, uh, how long is a quality brie typically aged for? Uh, because brie's a, a larger mass than, say, camembert, it takes about six weeks is the optimal aging uh, for a brie. Any more than that, you'll find the centre be really runny. Any less than that, you'll find the centre will be quite pasty. Um, and won't be um, uh, it won't be s smooth and as th all the way through. Okay. Um, Chris says, "Have you ever tried unpasteurized goat milk camembert? I like regular cow's milk camembert, but even this was too strong for my taste. Can't say that I have. I haven't tried it. Haven't even tried making it. I made a." Something similar, I uh, made a ash-coated uh, bloomy goat blue, um, and that was really nice. It had a really strong flavour to it, a uh, uh, strong goaty flavour, I suppose. Um, it's the lipase in the goat's milk that makes it taste like that. Uh, and I did like it, I really did, and we uh, demolished that within a week. Um, it was very nice indeed. It only took like 10 days to mature um, because you don't want the penicillium candidum and geotrichum candidum to start converting the paste into that oozy um, um, ooziness that you get with normal camemberts. Uh, you just want the surface to have that white bloom to add a little bit of flavour to it. But essentially it's a, it's kind of like sherv, which is the you know, goat's milk um, 
cream cheese, basically, um, and with a white coating, and and the ash helps the 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 two molds grow on the surface because goat's milk is usually quite high in acidity as well. Um, but yeah, I do like it. I do like it. I haven't had raw or oh, sorry unpasteurized goat's milk. Um, I've only had pasteurized. Zane says, hi, Gavin, uh, still going strong. Couldn't have done it without your help. Just want to say thanks for all you do. Thank you, Zane. Appreciate it, mate. Philip says, love your videos. Thank you, Philip. Um, Miriam says, hi, I made cheddar like a week ago. I didn't wax it, so mold grew on it. Then I cleaned it with brine and some vinegar and waxed it. Should I check, take off the wax and check for mold again? Or, or... I think that was it. Or, oh. um, uh, no, you probably don't need to check it again. If you've made the wax coating complete, then you've excluded the oxygen and the mould shouldn't grow. Uh, but if you're really concerned, then, yeah, take it off um, and check it again. But uh, you know, waxing is a pain. Um, so I really only like doing waxing once. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you're really concerned, then take it off clean it off again and then um, do it again. Um, uh, Negro says, is there, uh, is there a cheese native to Australia? Um, there are lots of cheeses that uh, are made in Australia based on European recipes. Uh, are there any native? I think, well, have a look at the the, well, the Tasmanian pepperberry cheese that I ate. Uh, you won't find Tasmanian pepperberries growing anywhere else in the world, so I suppose that's native to Australia. It's only one I can think of, but there's lots of styles that are like that. Uh, um, but there's no... we didn't. I don't think we've invented any new cheeses. They're all fairly based on European recipes, that sort of stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Playmobil Musical said, if I could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? Um, definitely I would do a cheese tour of Europe um, if I was going to go somewhere. I've got my breakfast on me, I think. Um, yeah, I'd do a cheese tour of Europe. That would be very, very cool. Um, I'd really enjoy doing that. I dare say Kim would too. Uh, I'd like to go to lots of cheese producers and eat all their cheese. That'd be good. Um Thank you, Kim, for that link for the Wensley Dial. I know I'm like half, 20 minutes behind. Uh, Jockel, I think that's how you say it. Hi there, I've been asking, I've asked before in a comment, but is there a place for any way to buy my cheese? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, I don't have a license from Dairy Australia, so legally I cannot sell any of the cheese that I make. Um, it's just done in my home kitchen. It's not done in super sanitised um, area, um, but you can definitely make it at home. It's no big deal. I've been doing that for thousands of years. Um, you know, even back before the uh, the stone, the Bronze Age. You know, they were making them in clay pots in you know places a lot less unsanit, a lot less sanitary than my kitchen. That's for sure. Um, uh, Alla says, hi, my question is, what's the key of making good cheese, especially mozzarella and pecorino romano? Well, two totally different cheese types. Uh, key to making a good cheese is good milk. Uh, that's the basis of all good cheeses. So I certainly would um, yeah, source good milk to start with and you'll get a decent cheese. And it doesn't matter if your cheese turns out as a failure you'll always get really good ricotta. <laughs> so you can always recover your cheese, your milk from something. Uh, that 667 guy said, would you ever consider making a cheese with ghost peppers? I had enough problems with jalapeno, so no, I wouldn't. Um, Susan, hello from Jacksonville, Florida. Hello, Susan. And Jose from Mexico again. Hello, Jose again. Uh, Kim, thanks for the link for the... Um, uh, for the Parmesan. Um, uh, Alice says, does the weather affect the making of cheese? Only the temperature, Ella. Um, if you're, if the where you're making the cheese is actually hotter 
than the target temperature of the milk before you add the starter cultures, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. You will ne not be able to make cheese on that day. But if you've got a temperature control kitchen or something that doesn't go above uh, the target temperature, so like when it gets to 40 degrees here, uh, which it does sometimes. In fact, the next week, I think we've got four days of 37 degrees Celsius all in a row. Um, I would not be making cheese unless, you know, we had the house we have. We've got, um, you know, really thick insulation in the roof. We've got double glazing. Uh, and that keeps the temperature around about 25 degrees Celsius inside when it's like 40, uh, 37 or 40 degrees Celsius outside. So I can still make cheese. Um, that's the only restriction on the weather. doesn't matter about the humidity or anything like that. Higher humidity places may have an issue with uh, the, the um, drying period after you've taken the cheese out of the press, but that's the only other thing I can think of. Um, drier climates, the, age, the, the air drying time would be very quick. Um, you just got to watch the moisture content of your cheese. You don't want it drying out too much. But uh, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, there's another question here. How long does Parmesan cheese age? Well, traditional Parmesan ages for up to two years. Uh, but for the home cheese maker, because we don't have like 60 or 70 kilogram wheels uh, of cheese, which is what, 120 pounds roughly, uh, those bigger wheels of cheese, the big massive ones you see on telly or YouTube, um, or down the cheese monger, if you've got one locally, they retain the moisture fairly well. However, the smaller wheels we make, with about 10 litres of milk, uh, they will dry out very, very quickly. So you really do have to either wax or vacuum pack them after about a month when they form a rind. Any more, the rind just gets too thick, gets too hard, and all you can do is grate it. You can't actually... And grating, I mean you'll give it a really good hard rub to get that cheese grated. Um... So, yeah, so for a, for a one, I wouldn't age it more than a year um, if you're making it at home. So, um, where are we? Um, Lewis says, hey, Gavin, do the bacteria in raw milk change the flavour of mature cheeses drastically? I'm worried the starter cultures will be overpowered by the natural bacteria already in the milk. Um, in fact, it's the, actually the opposite, um, Lewis. Uh, but it depends on how long since the cat that it's come out of the animal. Um, so if you leave the milk for, say, three days, you're going to have a lot more lactic bacteria um, happening uh, in your in your raw milk. Okay. Oh, we've got a super chat. My goodness. Let's get an extreme close-up of that. There we go. Extreme close-up. Uh, what show is that from? Oh. Um, that's from um, Wayne's World. Right, there we go. So extreme close-up. Thank you, Ruth, for your $5 super chat. You've got a question. Um, I'd like to make your marble cheddar. Can I do it with goat's milk? Do I need to change the recipe in any other way? First, diff too difficult to... First, cheddar. Uh, you can make marble cheddar. Um, you will need to add a, mar a natto because you've got to remember the goat's milk has no beta carotene or very little anyway in it, so it won't cause the milk to be yellowish um, as cow's milk does. Uh, do you need to change the recipe? Uh, goat's milk, the target temperature is a little bit lower, probably two degrees Celsius. Uh, also, um, because it's got a higher fat content, you'll need to use a little bit less uh, rennet, but Stick with what I've got. It it's usually works quite well. So they're the only couple of changes if you're going to do that. Okay. Um, where was I up to? Uh, there was a question. Right, raw milk. Yeah, sorry. So the question, yes, up to three days and the lactobacteria starts to really multiply and breed acid. Um, so when you do hit it with your own starter cultures, they will take over, basically. But the milk's got to be fresh. It's got to be usually within a day of coming out of the animal um, to make cheese. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't use it any other way, unless it's been frozen on the same day that it was milked and then shipped to you and then you defrost it. And, um, there it is. Lewis says that 
Also, is there a way to check the fat percentage of raw milk? There's no package for me to check. Uh, yeah, there are some tests that uh, cheese manufacturers use, um, test kits. So you can actually buy those online. We don't supply them because most people who make cheese using our stuff um, use um, milking cartons. So, yeah, there are test kits out there that uh, dairies use to check the fat content, um, the bacteria content, um, to make sure there's no e. Coli, e. coli or salmonella or what's the other one? They're the main ones, main bad bacterias. Um, so, yeah, check that out. Um, Deb, newbie sort of here. G'day from Melbourne. G'day, Deb. Um, Geordie, thanks for the great advice. There's no problems. Kevin says, Lewis, no worries. If you cut the ripening time, it isn't a problem. I had only made raw milk cheeses. Oh, thanks, Kevin. Well done. Um, uh, thanks for those links, Kim. Appreciate that. And uh, Oh, Triple Seed said thanks. Scotty Plug says, cheers, Gavin. Always nice to see you on here. Any proper plans on redoing that Stilton vid and a follow-up taste test? Um, I've actually got some blue cheeses in the fridge at the moment. They were part of the Cam Blue video that I was doing. And uh, it just so happens that the Camembert, uh, sorry, the Penicillium Candidum and Geotrichum just didn't grow. So I've got some really creamy, rich little cheeses that would be very similar to, well, probably a Stilton, yeah. Um, but they're very small. Uh, so you can probably use... That recipe, when I get it up, I'm hoping to do that over the weekend um, in between times that I'm making the cheese. Um, okay, cool. Uh, another super chat. Thank you very much. We'll um, have a look at that one in a sec. Where are we? Uh, from Ruth again. Is marbled too difficult for a first-time cheddar? Yes. Ruth, I would not do marbled cheddar until you've actually made it once before. The cheddaring process is a little bit of a pain. Um, but it's well worth it because you get that texture, the crumbly texture of the cheddar cheese, um, true traditional cheddar anyway. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, for a newbie, I wouldn't cloth band it. Maybe the second one that you make, cloth band, but the first one, just wax it because you want the full experience and you don't want it to be spoiled by bad cloth banding and not using um, either butter or lard. I use coconut oil. The first time I did it, and it grew too many funky moulds, even though it's an antibacterial itself. Um, and one of the moulds got into the cheese and kind of changed the flavour of the cheese. So it's better to wax or vacuum pack. Um, smaller cheddars, anyway. Uh, for, but, yeah, don't do the marbling. I, that's my recommendation until you've had a go at making cheddar and know the process, because otherwise the two-pot stirring thing uh, will really uh, convolute the issue and confuse um, confuse you during that initial cheese making. Um, okay. Um, I think I need a sip of coffee first. All right. So, um, where am I up to? Goodness me. So many questions. It's great. Um, so yeah, I, I will do a Stilton follow up. I'll write that on my list. Uh, because the first one was a bit ordinary. Um, about five years ago, I think I made it, and the video probably wasn't the best. Um, but lots of people have used that recipe and reported back to me and said it's fantastic. So um, I've made it twice using that recipe. Um, Agus says, Vac Pat, use freezer Ziploc bag, suck the air out using a straw, and quickly seal the bag. Not as good as Vac packing or waxing, but nearly as good. That's a good recommendation, Aga. That'll, that would work quite well. Um, Kim is a good assistant. Yes, she is. <laughs> she is a great assistant. I, look, I wouldn't be able to do the live stream if it wasn't for her um, backing me up in, in her office. Um, she's not here in the in the studio, but, uh, yeah, she, she does a wonderful job. I really do appreciate it, um, Kim helping me out. Um <laughs> Thanks, Aga. I thought the channel was Kim and some bloke rambling on about cheese in the background. Yeah, it probably is, actually. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas, hello, Gavin. If I use goat's milk to make mozzarella, do I need to do anything differently 
to make quick mozzarella. I would highly recommend you don't make quick mozzarella with goat's milk. Goat's milk is too fragile. Uh, the fat content's probably okay. Um, but yeah, make traditional mozzarella, not quick mozzarella. You'll find that it will be pretty ordinary. Um, so uh, there are lots of other good goat's cheeses to make than quick mozzarella. Um, I find it's one of those quick and nasty cheeses that you can just whip up with the crappiest store-bought milk you've got. So you can do that. Oh, another super chat. Thank you so much. This is Chris. And Chris says, Gavin, no question today, but more of a complaint. <laughs> I am now addicted to making cheese. Thank you for your inspiring good work. Oh, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it, mate. And I'm so sorry that you're addicted to cheese, cheese making. It is very addictive, I know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I do appreciate <laughs> your comment. Thanks, mate. Um, okay. Uh, where I was? Oh, yeah, everybody's giving Kim uh, praise. Right, where is it? Uh, Paris says, is cheese satisfying? I think that's what you're saying. Of course it is. Wouldn't be here otherwise. Where would all, all these people wouldn't be here if it wasn't satisfying? Yes, cheese making is satisfying. I really do enjoy it. I think thousands of other do. Um, uh, Kevin says Emmentaler. Yep, that's good. Yep, Emmentaler is good. No, it's not the cheese for this week. Um, uh, Gavin says, oh, Zach Gavin. No, that's my, sorry. Zachary says, uh, hey, Gavin, does cheese age like wine? The longer the better. Uh, only certain cheeses. Fresh cheese? No, it doesn't get any better with age. In fact, it's better the fresher it is. Uh, Semi-hard? Probably not, except for maybe Gouda. And Gouda, when aged up to a year, tastes amazing. Uh, but the harder cheeses uh, in the cheddar, so the cheddar family and the Italian hard cheeses, definitely all improve with age. Um, it's all to do with um, two processes, um, pardon me, that um, enzymes break down. So the, the lactobacteria die, release enzymes into the cheese, and the enzymes then uh, can go through two processes. One's called uh, pro proolysis, proolysis, yeah, which is the breakdown of the proteins, and the other one's called lipolysis. And that's the breakdown of the fats. Um, so the longer the cheese, ha the enzymes have to do that, the better and stronger the flavour of the cheese. Okay, hope that helps. Um, JW says, tried mozzarella two times, both came out like ricotta. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. Uh, either it's the milk, uh, and if you're using ultra, ultra pasteurised or UHT milk, it won't work. Sometimes even pasteurised homogenised milk won't work properly because the flat, fat glob, flat, flat, the fat globules are too small. Uh, you've got to get un, either raw milk or um, unhomogenised, uh, unpasteurised. Yeah, un, unhomogenised, sorry, and raw milk. Uh, or the other one is you're not adding enough rennet. Um, or um, you're not adding enough uh, acid to make the cheese stretch. But if you... If it's not getting a proper curd set, um, then it probably won't work anyway. Um, Kim put the bloomy goat blue. Thank you very much, Kim. Stuart says, hi, i just like to say your videos have inspired my nine-year-old daughter and myself to take up cheese making. It's great for, it's, sorry, it's made for some great dad-daughter time. Well done. Um, and uh, congratulations on taking up a great hobby um, I've tried, well, not I've tried, uh, Ben and I have made cheese a couple of times. Um, and Ben's my youngest son. He's now 19. And my daughter, Amy, um, she has made two cheeses, two lactic-free cheeses because, or lactose-free cheeses, not lactic, uh, lactose-free cheeses. And you've seen videos of those. Um, and, uh, but they're both kind of adults. When they made it, it would have been great to make cheeses with my young kids, but I, I wasn't into it back then. Um, definitely into it now. So, uh, Ruth, this might be a question before her super chats. 
Um, I'd like to make your marble cheddar. Can I do it with goat? No, we already answered that. Uh, no, my traditional cheddar is... Yep, okay, answered those. Thank you, Ruth, for doing those super chats. Um, I knew I'd get to them eventually. Um, funny Pets. Hello, Gavin. What's my favourite cheese from Argentina? Uh, I don't know because I've never tried any and I don't think uh, Argentinian cheese gets exported into Australia. Uh, so, sorry, don't know. Um, Ru uh, Kevin says, do you know the Mulaney Cheese Factory? Uh, there is a Swiss cheesemaker. Yeah, I've actually read uh, news articles because I get a regular feed from uh, Google Alerts. Um, I just put in the word cheese making as the alert and I get a like a stream of news articles. And one of them was um, about the Mulaney Cheese Factory and the guy, I can't remember his name, but um, yeah, and he does make some amazing cheeses there. It's a, a small-ish artisan cheese making factory, pretty cool. Up there in the uh, the Queensland, I think they call it the Hinterland. Um, just north of Brisbane. Um, Patricia says, waxing is not a pain. I think waxing is fun. It, look, it is, but it's messy. It's messy. Maybe that's what I should have said. It's not a pain. I like doing it as well, dipping the cheese into the wax. It's all very cool. Uh, but it is messy compared to, say, vacuum packing, which is pop it in a plastic bag, seal it, and forget it, um, and just turn it. Uh... Uh, Ali says, hi, what's the difference between liquid and powdered culture and you prefer? Uh, I haven't seen any liquid culture except for liquid um, Penicillium Rogue 40, which I'm actually going to get some into the shop very soon, and it's a vegan option because I've had some people asking about vegan options as far as cheese goes. Um uh i and that's the only thing and it needs to freeze it actually goes off quicker pat the powdered uh, direct vat inoculated starter cultures if you keep them in the freezer they will last a very very long time even past the best before date and i've been using starter cultures that have been sometimes even two two and a half maybe three years old and they work fine honestly um I don't know what all this hullabaloo is about best before dates on starter cultures. Sometimes, though, I do find that the packet's been compromised and the starter culture is all gluggy at the bottom. You can't use it because it's been activated. But uh, as long as it's still in a powdered form, uh, mixed with the maltodextrin or, or lactose powder, whatever's in there, um, as long as it's dry, it's fine. Okay, uh, Leonardo says, Hi, Gavin. Uh, send a shout-out to... Me in uh, Canoas, Brazil. G'day, Leonardo. Um, Tara, do you ever get bothered by people who leave comments uh, being... Do I? Hang on, I'll start this one again. Do you ever get bothered by people who leave comments being rude about your processes? Um, no, I don't. I've got a fairly thick skin. Uh, and what I do... <laughs> is uh, if there's any swearing or anything like that on the channel, other than the odd bloody, that's fine, that's Australian, um, then um, I delete the comment because it's a... Fr f f I'll get my words right. It's a family-friendly channel um, and uh, I don't stand for that kind of rubbish. And anybody... If it's constructive criticism and... Uh, that's fine. They'll answer the question and I'll take that on board. But if it's just trash talk, then I'll just delete it. There's no room for that sort of stuff on this channel. Um, uh, Jockle says, thanks for the answer. I just don't have the time or space or storage. Maybe one day. No problems. Um, dollar for dollar says, I think they found 2,000 years cheese in a Scottish bar bog at some point. They've actually found quite a few old cheese vessels, but not much cheese. Um, and usually around Mesopotamia, well, what was Mesopotamia and Egypt. Uh, they've even found some Neolithic uh, cheese or cheese vessels, usually clay pots, um, was found, I think, around Turkey or Romania, around there somewhere, or Bulgaria. Um 
and they were dated back about 2,000 years as well. But they were definitely making cheese 2,000 years ago. Have a look at the uh, the Christian Bible actually states that, uh, I think it was Jesus ate curds or something like that. Um, and the Babylonians were making it thousands of years before the Christian era. So cheese has been around for before recorded history. So before recorded history, more than 10,000 years old. Uh, and that could be just basic lactic cheeses, but um, they invented rennet somewhere along the line and uh, started making amazing cheeses. Some great books. In fact, I've got a really good book. What time is it? 20 past. I'll just show you. Um, this book here um, by uh, Paul... Uh, how do I pronounce that? Uh, Kindstead, I think that's how you say it. Paul Kindstead. It's called Cheese and Culture, uh, and it's the history of cheese and its place in Western civilization. Really good. Um, if you want to learn, learn the history of cheese, um, go and check this out. You can get it uh, on Amazon. I'll put a link to an Amazon affiliate link for this book um, in the the notes. And you'll see that in the replay. Um, cool. Uh, where are we up to? Um, Eric says, okay, I get that you've done. You don't have a favourite, but what about top five cheeses you love? Great channel. Good luck. Uh, couldn't rattle them off right now. Um, sorry, Eric. Only got ten minutes to go, mate. Nine? Nine. Uh, but there will be a top five, bottom five for the... Uh, cheese a day challenge that'll be coming up on the 1st of March um, Axe and Facts is kind of tricky for small artisan cheese maker to comply with the bureaucracy of selling cheeses in many countries, Brazil is not an exception, I agree, you can't even do it in Australia, there's so many hoops to go through um, it's a regulated food stuff so unfortunately you've got to follow all the rules or you just can't sell it uh, Jordan says I noticed that the cheese man moved from your website to YouTube only after number 18. What's the reason for this? I noticed Ask the Cheese Man moved from your website to YouTube only after number 18. Uh, I probably just haven't posted it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, everything's always on YouTube. That's the kind of go-to place for all the videos where they are. Um, uh, I might not have been ticking the box to put it into the right um, playlist, which gets shown on the website. Uh, but I'll have to check that out. Um, Alice says, when do we get real taste, the real taste of Pecorino Romano? Uh, what, you weren't happy with the one that I made? Um, there was a taste test for Pecorino Romano somewhere there. It was really nice. Um, I haven't found any. I can't find any in the shops. So if I can't find it, I can't taste it. Um, Kevin says, made your quick mozzarella and it was friggin' awesome. Yes, yes. <laughs> it is pretty good. It's a nice cheese, but you've got to use the right milk for it. And um, I'm afraid goat's milk won't work very well. Um, um, having said that, I've only had reports that it doesn't work well. I've never tried it myself. Um... Uh, thanks again, Gavin, for everything. I just wanted to ask, do you vacuum pack some of the cheeses early? Uh, doesn't it lower or stop bacteria from working and ageing? Thanks again. Uh, vac packing doesn't actually stop the bacteria from working. Um, as soon as the cheese cools down, uh, the bacteria actually stops working. And as soon as there's no more lactose in the cheese, the bacteria die anyway and then create um, the remaining stuff behind is enzymes, which then break down the fats and proteins. You don't need oxygen for that to happen. Um, Jordan, can you use raw milk for all the cheeses? Yes, you can, as long as your source of raw milk, you're comfortable with it and that it's clean and you use it within a couple of days. Uh, Chris says, what's the best way to store bought hard cheeses such as Gruyere, Gouda, Comte, uh, the packets say used within three days, one week, depending on the cheese, but surely they can last lots longer. Yes, they can last lots longer. Make sure they're wrapped in waxed paper, um, and that will make them uh, maintain the moisture within the wax paper. They will last 
a oh, couple of weeks, three weeks. Um, really, if you're going to store them longer, then you keep them in the cheese, uh, not the cheese kit fridge. You put them into uh, vacuum seal it, and uh, they'll last years in the fridge. Years, honestly. Um, I'm so far behind. No, um, uh, Axe and Facts, do you know any resources or recipes for cheese wax? What kind of waxes to mix and what proportions? What would mix of beeswax and paraffin work? Mm, no, don't know. Um, I just buy it. It's called microcrystalline wax. Um, and you get it from all good cheese making suppliers. Uh, beeswax would probably work. Paraffin does not work. Uh, because it's too brittle uh, and doesn't expand and contract with the cheese. That just cracks. It's terrible stuff. Don't use paraffin, whatever you do. Beeswax would work. It is flexible, but it's very expensive. Um, Scotty says, yay for Stilton. Mine died before Christmas. Inedible. Looking forward to a new one. Uh, good. Uh, try again. Try, try again. Or as Yoda says, there is no try, there is just do. Uh, or is it something like that? Uh, Kevin says, any updates on book number two? Uh, still working on it, Kevin. Um, I'm doing a little bit uh, every week um, in between videos and uh, working in our shop. Um, so it is taking longer than usual. I've been pro I promised it last March. <laughs> My goodness. Gee, that was an understatement, wasn't it? Um, uh, Deb says, I bought my butter kit and received it yesterday. The packets of culture say best by December 18. Are they still good to use? Yes. Yes, they are. Um, they will be fine and keep them in the freezer, uh, until you use them. Uh, Jedi fat. Um, I have some blue cheese that got accidentally, that accidentally got infected with geo trichum. It was delicious. Yeah, those little serendipitous events are pretty cool as far as cheese growing, all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, Kim said, did you buy it from us? Uh, we'll send you a replacement. Yep, if that's the case, no problems. Uh, Kevin says, uh, that's how some of the best cheeses are invented, indeed. Uh, Deb said, kit, the kit was bought elsewhere. Yeah, we always check our cultures before we ship them out, Deb. We make sure they're in date, uh, at least a couple of months anyway. Um, sometimes it's out of our control, but certainly we never send out uh, stuff that's past its best before date. Even though we know that it lasts longer, we want to give the cheesemaker the best start to cheese making they possibly can. Or in your case, butter, cultured butter. Um, yeah, Kim's already answered that. Um, Kevin started using rennet tablets and it works well, but how much... Tablet equals to half a teaspoon of liquid rennet. Um, it depends on the strength of the tablet, Kevin. If you're using um, the uh, Fromage 50 style, then each tablet's for 50 litres of milk. Uh, for 10 litres of milk, then it's quarter of a tablet. It's actually 12.5 litres, but it'll work. Uh, and it won't, over, it won't make it too strong. So a quarter of a tablet for 10 litres of milk. Uh, 10 to 12. Uh, Ruth says, will you make a video of honey um, rubbed montaggio? Uh, there is a recipe in um, a book by Mary Carlin, honey rubbed. I actually have lots of honey. People keep sending it to me. Um, I might put that on the list of cheeses to do this weekend, Ruth. That would be pretty cool. Um, uh, Deb says, thank you. Waiting patiently for my artisan cheese kit to be delivered. Should be any day, but did make butter yesterday and it was beautiful. Well done, Deb. Uh, dollar for dollar. Just found the channel today. So I don't know anything related to cheese making in general is making cheese at home cost less than buying at the shop. Not counting the money, not counting time as money in this evaluation. Uh, eventually it will, but up front, you probably need to spend about $250 to get the ingredients and the uh, equipment you'll need to make cheese at home. But then after that, it's like any hobby, 
Um, it just gets cheaper each um, each item you make, each piece of cheese you make. Um, it's one minute to go, and Kim's giving me the wind up. I'm sorry, I didn't get to the last few questions there. Um, uh, where are we up to? Um, Kim says, visit the online shop. Yes, indeed. Go to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Uh, lots of good cheese making goodies, equipment, kits, all that sort of stuff there, and backed up with support from us. Um, so if you have any questions during your cheese making process, shoot them via email and uh, we will answer them. Don't forget to support us via Patreon or YouTube memberships. Saw a couple of members today. And thank you very much for those new members. We really do appreciate it. Um, there are links in the description below for YouTube memberships and Patreon. So check those out um, or click on the one there. Uh, and the merch store where you can get cool merch like this one. Blessed are the cheese makers or cups. There's even iPhone covers. Whew. Uh, we got everything. Um, so pop over to teespring.com store slash cheese man TV. Um, and all very good. And uh, Rima, sorry, I don't have any time to translate that. Uh, Jordan says, where can I buy your book in print form? Um, Kim's got the link there. I'll have to print some off. Uh, these will be back in stock soon, which will be today because um, I'll have to get on to that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget that uh, this show would be nothing without you guys and girls. Um, there would be no show because there'd be no questions. So thank you and I appreciate your time that you spent to watch this hour-long show. Um, it's been fantastic uh, answering your questions. I really do appreciate it. Anyway, until next week, thank you very much and we'll see you next time.